Peptides in skincare, this is becoming an increasingly common trend and is that really worth the hype? That's what we're gonna dive in today. I'm a board certified dermatologist and I'm gonna explain to you the four different types of peptides that we commonly see in skincare products and explain how they might work. And my personal opinion is that peptides are going to become an increasingly relevant part of our skincare as scientists are searching for new ways to help rejuvenate the skin and to improve our appearance. My name is Dr. Dustin Portella and if you're new to the channel, I make videos to help support my mission to provide free dermatology care to underserved populations and communities throughout my area and beyond. And I have a mobile clinic that we go out and we provide charitable care in to unhoused individuals, individuals living in poverty who might not be able to afford health insurance, they might not qualify for government assistance for whatever reason, whether they're undocumented or native to this country, and we just wanna provide good care to them. So that is why I make videos and anything that I talk about here when you watch the videos, if you purchase any products from the links in the video description, it helps to support that cause of providing free dermatology care. Let's jump into peptides today. What exactly are peptides? Peptides are essentially proteins and they can act as signaling molecules in the skin. Now you can take oral collagen peptides as a way to help give your body all the building blocks to make collagen in your skin, your bones, your joints, whatever it is. But peptides are becoming used more commonly in topical products. And there's a few things you need to be aware of if you're gonna start using products that advertise as peptide products. The idea behind using a peptide is that it will penetrate into the skin and these peptides can either provide the cells, the DNA, the enzymes with everything that they need in order to do their job better or to act as a signaling molecule to tell it to do something and give it that stimulus so that it produces more collagen or elastin fibers, or maybe it acts as an inhibitor of the things that break down collagen, or maybe it stops neurotransmission. So there are four main categories of topical peptides that we see emerging in skincare products. As I cover them, I'm gonna give you generic examples of what these are, and I will have a few product recommendations down in the video description for you. The first category of peptides are signaling peptides. The goal of these is to get down into the skin and to stimulate your fibroblasts or other types of skin cells to produce more collagen, to produce more elastin, to create more hyaluronic acid, to make the skin look more plump, to look more dynamic, to have fewer lines and wrinkles. And in general, when these work well, you will see an increase in collagen production. But there's a few caveats. These molecules have to penetrate the skin and our skin is designed not to let things through very well. So when scientists are formulating these peptides, they have to get them in a vehicle delivery system that's gonna help them penetrate the skin. They're gonna have to be small enough enough to get through the skin barrier. So not everybody that throws a peptide in a skincare product has actually made something that will be effective at its end result. Most of the peptides that we use topically that are signaling peptides are designed to increase collagen production. Now, we have another product that can help increase collagen production, and that is retinol. Retinol is tried and true. It is well tested and it really works. But the problem is that not everybody can use a retinol because the side effect of retinol is often that it causes irritation. So when we use prescription tretinoin, when we use other prescription retinols, dryness is a very common side effect. A lot of the over-the-counter retinols have to be converted into retinoic acid once they get in the skin, but they also have less risk of irritation. My retinol that I use most frequently now is from Skin Better Science, and their formulation is just fantastic. I've been using it for a year now, and I haven't had any irritation. I even moved on to their higher strength one and no problems. I will have a link for that down in the video description, but we're not here to talk about retinol, we're here to talk about peptides. So let's talk about an example of a signaling peptide that is designed to help increase collagen production. Pentapeptide 4, also known as Matrixyl, is a common topical peptide. And I have used a product from Depology that has Matrixyl in it. This is designed to go and stimulate collagen production in the skin. I find that the Depology product actually feels really great on the skin. It's a lightweight serum, and I have recommended it to patients who maybe can't tolerate a retinol or a prescription strength retinoid, but want something to help boost their collagen production. The second class of peptides we're gonna dive in today are called 
carrier peptides, and these are designed to get into the skin and then deliver things that the skin cells or the enzymes, the DNA, whatever it is, might need in order to function better. So they're not directly acting as a signal to tell it, hey, do this, hey, build more collagen, hey, build more elastin. They're more saying, hey, you guys need these building blocks in order to do your job better. Here they are. Copper peptides are the most common example of carrier peptides that we see in skincare. Copper peptides have been used in lots of different products. We have one here in my office through the Dean Skincare line. I'll have a link for that as well. But copper peptides deliver copper to these enzymes and things because copper is an important cofactor in many enzymes in order to work better. It like, doesn't the metaphor kind of breaks down, but like lubing the gears of the enzyme helps it work better. It's just a necessary part of many different enzymes in order to do their job better. So copper peptides can help to brighten the skin, help those enzymes to work better that are building collagen, that are doing all sorts of things for the skin. The next category of peptides I think is often overlooked, and that is enzyme inhibitor peptides. So these peptides go into the skin if they can get delivered to the right area, and they stop enzymes from performing their function. You might ask, why would I want them to stop doing something? Well, the reality is our skin is always in homeostasis. It's always building things and breaking things down. We have in our bones osteoclasts and osteoblasts. Osteoblasts build more bone and osteoclasts break down bone. And this is happening all of the time in our bones, but also it happens in our skin where collagen and elastin is created and it is degraded over time. So inhibitor enzyme peptides peptides can basically go in and stop these enzymes called matrix metalloproteinases from breaking down your collagen and from remodeling the skin. Overall, this can help to preserve the skin's structural integrity because as we get older, these building enzymes just don't work as well. They don't keep up with the amount of loss because that loss is not only due to the enzymes that degrade it, but it's due to UV damage, it's due to pollution, toxins in our environment. So we're continually being insulted with things that can degrade our collagen, that can break down our elastin. And so if we can slow down the body's natural processes that would also degrade these things, it can help to preserve that collagen and that elastin for longer periods of time. Glycerin soja peptide or soybean peptides are examples of these that can get into the skin and help act as enzyme inhibitors to preserve that structural integrity of the skin. And our last category of peptides are neurotransmitter inhibitor peptides. The way this works is let's talk about it like Botox because the example that I'm gonna use is argireline. Argireline is also called acetyl hexapeptide 8. Essentially, we have a nerve that comes from our central nervous system, the peripheral nervous system, and it goes to a muscle. And when that nerve fires, it tells the muscle to constrict. This is most obvious when we start to develop wrinkles. If you're mad at your children and you start to frown here, if you're curious and you raise your eyebrows. So Botox will go in and stop that neurotransmitter. So it inhibits the nerve from telling the muscle to contract. Essentially, argireline is designed to do the same thing. It inhibits the neurotransmitter release that tells the muscle to contract. Some people will call argireline Botox in a bottle. Now, it has to be used very consistently and it's never going to inhibit the muscles to the same degree as Botox will. Botox is incredibly potent. We use it at very low doses. Even if you're getting a lot of units, it's a very small dose. So when we put that in there, it's very potent, stops the muscles completely from contracting. Argireline just softens that a little bit and that's why it has to be used every day. This is not something you can put on once a week and really expect to see big benefits from it. The product that I've used that has argireline in it is also from Dipology. They have a great combo. It is Matrixyl in one serum and argireline in the second serum. They work really well in combination and they're really cosmetically elegant products. I'm not sponsored by them, but it is just a pair of products that I've used and that I like. Now, the most important thing when shopping around for peptides in skincare is try to understand the skin problems you're trying to correct and picking the peptides that are gonna best suit that. And then the third level is making sure that they're formulated well. Look for reviews, look on YouTube, on different places where dermatologists are talking to talk about the efficacy of these products. Have they done real clinical trials? Have they done studies that were longer than a period of four weeks and had people just say, hey, my skin looks better in four weeks. Great, hooray. But what's this gonna do if you're using it consistently for six months, 12 months, 18 months? Are you really gonna see long-term sustained benefit? Not all companies are gonna do these longer studies, but if you can find them, then I highly recommend them. If you're trying to build collagen, signaling molecule peptides are gonna be a great option for you. If you're 
you're really concerned about lines and wrinkles, something like a neurotransmitter inhibiting peptide could also be good if you're moving your muscles and you're developing lines on your forehead. Hopefully understanding the different types of peptides in skincare will help you to make more informed choices. This is not necessarily a product focused type of video, but just giving you some of the science behind peptides in skincare, because I think we're gonna see better and better peptides released. They're gonna formulate them in new and improved ways so that they deliver better to the skin and that their effects can actually start to manifest when you use them with consistency. Guys, thank you so much for watching the video. I look forward to seeing you on the next one and Thank you for supporting my cause to take free dermatology care to underserved communities. I'll see you guys next time.